Okay, so in this video, we will prove part A of the ratio test. And if you recall, part A is that if the limit as n tends to infinity of an plus 1 over an in absolute value is strictly larger than 1, then automatically the series of an from 0 to infinity diverges. So let's prove that this actually is correct. So we have by assumption, and as our only assumption, that the limit of an plus 1 over a n is strictly larger than 1. So suppose that the value of this limit equals say k, where k is some real value larger than 1. Let's look at this now in the real line. So we have 0, we have 1, and k is some real number larger than 1. Now, this equality implies that when n is getting larger and larger and larger, this term is getting as close as we want to k. So we can form a small interval around k that is away from 1. Let's call the left hand point L for the lower bound, the right hand point U for upper bound. And because by taking n to be as large as we want, we can make these terms as close as we want to k, if we take n to be large enough, all of these terms should lie inside this small interval. Of course, if we take n to be large enough, how large we don't know, so call the smaller value of n that will guarantee that if lowercase n is bigger than this point, then all of these terms are inside of our small interval, therefore they're really close to k. Now, let's just rewrite this in terms of an inequality. So, we have that an plus 1 over an is strictly between, as we have an open interval, l and u. And this is, of course, for values of n that are large enough. And the point is, again, that l is also strictly larger than 1. So we can ignore this part of the inequality and only focus on this part. So this inequality here is valid for n equals uppercase n, uppercase n plus 1, and so forth. So let's see what happens if we take n to be uppercase n, and then n plus 1 and so forth, and we'll see that something interesting will come out of this inequality. So what do we have? Well, I am now replacing lowercase n by uppercase n, so I have a n plus 1 over a n, uppercase n, and I will now write this backwards, so this is larger than l. But now, I can multiply across the inequality by a n in abstract value, which shows that a n plus 1 in absolute value is larger than l times a n in absolute value. But l is larger than 1. So keep this in mind, this is very important. What if we take n to be now uppercase n plus 1? Let me plug it in here. So n plus 1 plus 1 is n plus 2. n plus 1. And this, of course, is larger than n. Multiply across the inequality by a n plus 1 in absolute value. And now we can use here our previous inequality. a n plus 1 in absolute value is larger than l times a n. So this will be larger than, if I multiply across by l, right, l times a n plus 1, as l is positive, will be larger than l times l, l squared, times a n in absolute value.
and you can keep going like this and you see what's going to happen, right? A n plus 1 is larger than L times A n. A n plus 2 is larger than L squared times A n. So if we keep going like this, m steps, n being uppercase n plus uppercase m, by the same reasoning, we'll have that the absolute value of a n plus uppercase m is larger than l to the uppercase m times a uppercase n in absolute value. And now we're essentially done if we ask ourselves two questions. The first question is, could this be zero? Well, the one assumption we made about our sequence is none of its terms were equal to zero. So a n in absolute value is strictly positive. And a key point to ask ourselves also is, what do we know about l? The key fact about l is it is strictly larger than one. And now let's look at both sides of the inequality and now let m tend to infinity. So let's see what happens. So we try and take the limit on both sides as m tends to infinity. A n, or I should say uppercase n, is just a fixed number. But this is true for any value of m. So we are allowed to let m approach infinity. So these terms are always larger than these terms, so in the limit, the limit of the larger terms will be at least as big as the limit of the smaller terms. This is constant with respect to m. This is a positive real number. And the key point is that l is strictly larger than 1. So we are taking larger and larger powers of a real number that is larger than 1. This will become larger and larger and larger and will blow up to positive infinity in the limit. So we have infinity times something positive. The limit is infinite. But look at this. So the limit of an absolute value a n plus m tends to infinity. But look at this. n is nothing but a fixed positive integer. And now we look at plus m where m tends to infinity, which means that this limit is clearly infinity, as it's at least as big as infinity, so that's the only option, but this means that the limit, as n tends to infinity of a n in absolute value, is infinite. After all, all we're saying here, by letting m tend to infinity, we're letting the index of our sequence become larger and larger and larger. And when this happens, the sequence in absolute value blows up to infinity. Well, if a n, as n tends to infinity in absolute value, blows up, clearly the limit, as n tends to infinity of a n, cannot be zero. If a n would shrink to zero in the limit, so would its absolute value. And now you say, well, Wait a second, we are looking at a series where the terms in the limit do not shrink to zero. This is a simple divergence test. So the series from the 0 to infinity of a n diverges by the divergence test. And again, the intuition is clear. Because, if we summarize very quickly, because the limit as n tends to infinity of a n plus 1 over a n in absolute value is strictly larger than 1, the conclusion is that the limit of a n as n tends to infinity cannot be 0. So we look at a series where we're trying to sum terms that are not getting small enough, and so the series cannot converge, therefore diverges by the divergence test. And this completes the proof of part A of the ratio test. Indeed, 
1 an plus 1 over an, an absolute value, and letting n tend to infinity, the result is larger than 1, the series diverges. And that's it.